Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel for another YouTube tutorial. This time, it's more of a watch me edit style video. I'll be narrating what I'm doing in the clip so you can see how I make this effect. This is quite a more complex tutorial, so I do not recommend this if you're a beginner as I don't go in full details of everything. You kind of need to have a basic knowledge of After Effects for this. But let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll definitely be answering them. So let's get started. So to get started, I'm going to be editing this picture in Photoshop. Um, this is not necessary, but this is how I like to prep my images. So I'm going to be using the generative fill setting here in Photoshop. And that allows me to extend my image using AI. It usually does a really good job. I just want to make sure that we have enough space to work in this image and that it's not too cropped. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, you can do this step in After Effects as well. I just prefer to use Photoshop because it's faster, but you could use the masking tool on After Effects and just quickly with the pen tool mask these three layers that I'm about to do here. So I'm going to select the front grass first. I'm going to be feathering it a lot, which you can also do with After Effects. And this is going to be my middle layer. So I'm going to be copy pasting this layer and also doing a shorter version. So we have like shorter grass at the front. If this is a bit confusing, just stick with me. I'll explain it more later on. It'll make sense once we're in After Effects. But we basically want to have short grass in the front, middle grass in the back, and then the background so that the image is split into three. Next up, I'm opening the Photoshop file into After Effects, um, just scaling it up, making sure it fits perfectly with my composition here. Now, if we double click the composition and we go into the scene, I'm going to put my Ariana mask in here. If you need a tutorial on how I mask videos, you can find a link to that in the description, but it is on my channel. Uh, it's called how to make perfect rotoscope mask, something like that. So now I'm going to try to make this scene 3D and make it look like Ariana is actually in this room. Um, I'm just scaling it up a bit and kind of seeing where I want to position her in the scene so i'm going to go for something kind of like this i think that looks good um now what we need to do is add a camera layer so to do that you go up in layer new camera and i'm just keeping mine as a two node camera and i'm going to go to 24 or 35 millimeters click OK. I'm then going to select all my layers and click on the 3D box to make sure the 3D is activated and then go on two views. The view on the left is the top of the scene and then on the right you kind of get to see what we see from a default point of view. So with this guide I can move my layers to make sure that they're separated and we have that depth that we're looking for. Make sure that you scale back your image because as you see, I'm placing it a bit backward and it makes it go smaller. So you just open up scale, scale it back up to make sure that they're all in line. So then what ended up happening is as I was moving my camera here, it wasn't really working well because on the right, I have default view and not camera one view. So I'm going back to my normal view and as I move back, I can see my layers are still not scaled properly. So I'm just fixing that a little bit. Clicking on each, making sure they're scaled well, like that. And then I'm trying to put some motion in my camera, but it's actually not really looking how I want it to. It's not looking that 3d at all and the issue here is that my background is not placed further enough so i'm going to go back in the two views and make sure the background is far far back as far as it can go and scaling it up and that way when we move the camera 
it's going to give us more of that 3D look that we are looking for. As you can see, it's already looking so much better and there's actually some sort of depth through it. My background is still not scaled properly, so I'm just going to adjust that. And now it should be good to go. I'm actually going to add a null layer and connect my camera to that. And then I'm going to control the camera movement with the null layer. It just makes it a little bit easier. Make sure 3D is set on the null layer. I'm then going to add a keyframe to the start of the clip and adjust my camera how I want it to look. And then at the end of the frame, at the end of the clip, I mean, I'm going to give the camera the movement I was imagining, maybe a little bit of orientation like this. What I'm going to do next is actually select on my camera layer, I'm going to select the point of interest. Um, you do option click if you're on a Mac and it's alt click if you're on a Windows. And we're going to write wiggle and then 3 comma 5. And what that does is it makes the camera shake a little bit just to give it like a natural handheld movement just to make it more realistic. And I do like how this looks. So I'm going to keep it like this. You can change the wiggle numbers a bit higher, a bit lower if you want. And then I'm just making sure again that this is centered in my composition. So I like how this looks. Now what we need to do is color match her to the rest of the scene. Now here's just a quick time lapse of me color matching the clip. Let me know if you'd like an in-depth tutorial on this because it is quite complex and I don't think I pull it off very well in this one. So I'd really like to re-explain it, but I wanted to just include it in case you're interested in, I don't know, slowing it down and looking at what I'm doing. But again, I can do a more in-depth tutorial on this. What I'm doing now is I added a light layer. So you go layer, new, light, and I went for ambient lighting and that kind of casts a light over your whole scene and that also helps it blend the clip with the scene better so i'm going for like a purple hue um i have it at 152 percent 200 is a bit too much i'll settle for 154 and i just have it as like a purpley glow and i think that makes it look way better so that's a really easy um thing you can do if you want to just quickly adjust the colors it usually pulls it off pretty well and i think it looks really pretty now I'm just going back on my null layer that's controlling my camera and just changing the X rotation a little bit or the orientation and I just want to give it a little bit more of movement so it looks more realistic and I also added motion tile in the back so it, the background doesn't get cropped off. Next I'm going to be adding a butterfly overlay. I'm going to be putting this on add. Make sure to toggle that it's 3D so that it moves with your camera. Um, and then I'm just gonna be moving it a little bit ahead so it's like in front of Ariana. And then when we click play, this already looks so cool. I love it. I am going to change it to lighten because Ad was making them a little bit too glowy for me. And I think something like this looks super nice. I love it. I love how this looks. And then here's just a quick time lapse of me adding in overlays just to make the scene feel more complete. Um, I thought these were nice, but I did add camera blur on them to make them look cool. I also added like a light flare and a grid overlay in the back. At this point, my sister had FaceTimed me, so I couldn't show the clip because my face and her face were in the screen. but. This is what I did to the scene. I just added the grid overlay and um, I made sure to make it 3D as well. Now what I'm going to do is I was just experimenting but I actually really liked how this looks. And it's I made Ariana, the mask of Ariana, like duplicate in the back. I thought this was super neat and I liked how it looks. So I'm going to be, I'm basically duplicating the mask and then with the position keyframe, making it slide a little bit from the back, making sure those are all on easy ease. Um, I don't have motion blur just yet because it makes my computer slower, but make sure to have motion blur on all your layers and to turn it on after.
Now what I ended up doing on the duplicate Ariana's in the back is adding CC Radial Blur on 5 and I thought it looked super cool and it kind of helped keep the focus on the first Ariana in front while giving this cold blurry look in the back. I just really liked how this looked. Most of me editing is just trial and error, trying things on, seeing if it looks good. So that's how I came up with this one. Making sure the positions here are all highlighted, easy ease to make sure that it's smooth. And this is the final result. I did turn on motion blur and have it on all my layers as you can see, but this is how it looks in the end. I'm really pleased with this. I think it's super cool. Let me know if you like this format where you're just watching me edit and come up with stuff on the spot. If you guys have any questions at all about this, leave them in the comments and I'll be answering them. But I hope this gives you an idea of how to make a 2D image 3D. Um, I do have another me a method that's a little bit more complex than this that I do want to show in another tutorial. It's kind of it's showing how I did the intro of this one. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like if you liked it. And I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye guys.